Yeah. Will be. Is that thing even plugged in? Huh. The uh, crowd mic doesn't sound like it's on. It's on the other side of the monitor over there. Huh. Were you a student here when Brandon was assistant yeah. coach? Yeah. There, that sounds better. Okay, there we go. Okay. Well, good evening and welcome to tonight's broadcast of Northwest Nazarene University basketball as the Nighthawks get set to tip it off against the Wildcats from Central Washington University tonight. I'm joined by Grant Miller as my color man. I'm Craig Stensgard, and for Josh Burkholder and his crew, thanks for being with us tonight. Grant, a big game here tonight as the Nighthawks look to avenge an earlier season loss and a battle in the middle of the conference standings. That's right. You got NNU coming into the night, number three in the conference, and Central just behind them at number four. Both these teams looking to make that late season run to secure their positions in the GNAC tournament. They're looking really good. They've been playing well. We'll see if Central Washington can put it together on the road. They haven't had great luck. Uh, this season away in conference play, and we'll see if NNU can protect home court on the other end. We're going to send it down to you. home court announcer Tim Milburn as he introduces the starting lineups for both teams and the national anthem. Good. Thanks for making the drive over. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a treat for you tonight. First off, we're going to have the opening prayer, and that is going to be delivered by Reg Finger, and then the national anthem will be sung tonight by Camila Ramos. Please stand for the prayer and the anthem. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for the great game of basketball, and we pray tonight that basketball will do what basketball is supposed to do, to develop healthy ladies and gentlemen of character at all levels. We pray that you would bless everyone from the children, to the students, to the players, to Coach John and Coach Brandon and their staffs, and the staff of the building, as well as us as fans, 
the officials as well, that we had, as fans would root our hearts out positively for our team. And thank you again, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our thanks to Tim Milburn for the courtside announcements. We're set to tip it off. Grant, keys to tonight's game. This is going to, it's like kind of like looking in a mirror, really, when you're looking at the statistics. 
That's right. Uh, Central Washington is led by two great scores, a couple of players who are going to be really important for the Nighthawks to try to control in a Samad Hector and Jello Lloyd. And there's Tip. Nighthawks, Nighthawks control the tip through the hands of a couple people, and True Allen's ready to get us rolling. Of course, Murphy and Murphy starting together tonight. The injury to Christian Rose came down on a hand a couple days ago in practice and is has a hand injury, so that's unfortunate for the Nighthawks. Bergeson straight to the rim, misses, gets a second offensive rebound. Now a three-pointer's up and missed by True Allen. That three-point shooting is going to be interesting to watch tonight. That first matchup, Central Washington shot the absolute everything out of the ball in that matchup in yeah. Ellensburg. They yeah. Over 50% from three for that night and really is what sealed the deal for them. Yeah, I watched that one on the uh, on the video broadcast and it was – it was a sad movie for a night for the Nighthawks. Right. There's a steal. <laughs> Reisenbergs and leads. Nighthawks lead the conference in steals per game. That is a beautiful statistic, especially if your turnovers are down. Here's the rotation around. Biggie wants a long three, and it is off. Rebound down to the Wildcats. Controlling, that's Jordan Clark, number zero up top. Crossover, elbow jumper is up and off the side of the rim for McNeil. Both these teams definitely come out with a lot of energy tonight, just having to get settled into the flow of the game. Murphy, now we've got point guard post up at the short corner, the kick out, Aaron. Nice roll to the basket Great for play. Murphy and giving Fox an assist early. And that's what you gotta do to settle into that rhythm, just move the ball around, find the open space. Here's Clark. Ooh, soft outlet pass nearly tipped again. Clark on the handoff, this time to Swilly. Swilly, the pull-up 15-footer, it's long. Gabe's got the tip on the rebound. I think it's going to stay. Nope, okay, wow. we'll take it. That's a tough call there, three guys <laughs> jumping for the ball. But we'll, the, the, to his credit, the baseline referee looked to the outside, found yep. somebody who got a better eye on it. Again, that shooting and settling into rhythm is going to be really important. Murphy up top, reverses from the top of the key. Again. Yeah, you can tell they're really going to try to work that. Yeah, we're going to get a blocking foul as, is that 24? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Hector. Uh, Samad Hector is going to draw the foul. His, his uh, feet were inside the restricted circle. So the pick and roll results yeah. in two free throws for Aaron Murphy. That's that's a really, even though you don't get the conversion there before the free throws, it's a huge play. If you can get Hector in foul trouble early, he's the leading rebounder in the GNAC. He's a huge player for them. So putting pressure on him is important. Free throws for Murphy. First one is good to open Yeah, Aaron's been a, been a good free throw shooter this season for the Nighthawks, especially late in games at times. So now we've got a 4-0 uh, Aaron Murphy run. We're waiting on the scoreboard to yeah. reflect that. Yeah, we're uh, just apparently that first first basket only counted for one. Apparently. There's a, it was a, oh, and there's the travel on Hector, which I think the same thing happened on the first possession, and the official saw it because I saw him kind of shake his head. Uh, when, he just moved it, moved the yeah, ball too he quickly kinda to call it. Yeah, he grabbed it and shuffled his feet before he went to the dribble. And I wondered if it was a travel, and I, I, I happened to catch the official's head, and you could tell he was deciding in his head if he thought it was a travel as that's well. A, that's a great dribble drive by True Allen, just going with the right hand too. Nice. True's playing with an injury in that right wrist. He's got it pretty heavily taped up, but he looks strong there. Yeah, oh, it's a soft touch, just, just a little out. In that first matchup, one of the maybe the only things the Nighthawks did well in that first matchup was contain Hector. Yeah. So we'll see. The Murphy brothers are, are clearly a good matchup for, for the Nighthawks against him defensively. Here's Gabe Murphy.
Down to Aaron. Aaron, they double down. He's going to go short corner, right-handed floater. That's a nice soft touch. Oh. Nice offensive rebound. We're going to oh, get a travel, a travel there. as Gabe wow. shuffled his feet before the up put yeah. back. If Murphy doesn't move his feet too much, he probably gets a foul call there yeah. on the shot, but unfortunately traveled. Hop, hopped a little bit too much before he got up. Got excited about it. Clark will bring it up for the Wildcats. Got a substitution there. Looks like Brzee is in for uh, the Wildcats, number 44. Double screen up top. Wrap around. Kick out. Oh, that's a nice play. Well-designed yep. set. But the three-pointer is missed by Sanders. Yeah. The Wildcats shooting has not been strong yet from the outside, but you can't count on that long term for the mm -hmm. game. Into the corner, Jalen Fox with a three-pointer. It's long. Offensive rebound by Gabe. Gabe is doing up, work in there. And he got he's gonna get a jump a ball. Jump? I'm not sure. Jump ball. If it's a if it's a block, it's a block though, isn't it? I mean the ball came loose. That'll bring him Yeah, I don't know. So he's going over to exp I'm explain not sure. it. But that'll take us to our first media break of the half. 1547, Nighthawks pitching a shutout. We'll be back in two minutes. Out of the break, Central Washington basketball. Swilly, excuse me, Sanders will inbounds into Clark. Nighthawks, a little bit picking it up in a 2-2-1 zone press here. Maybe looking for a trap. Trying to keep that pressure on early. Tipped out of bounds off the hands of Mason Machado, who checked in along with Mate Perez. Nathan Perez. A couple players who can make big, big impact in, in short minute stretches here. Sanders goes down the middle of the lane. Oh, the nice little floaters there as the Nighthawks left the basketball. Perez with the basketball. There's Machado. Perez step back three in and out. Rebound down to McNeil. Stolen away by True Allen. He's going to race McNeil to the rim, take it up, and off the glass. You know, True Allen, on the on the other side of the ball, he leads the conference in steals, so it's interesting to see him flourish there. Ooh, nice Wow, turn. nice press there. Great finish with the contact. Swilly with the bucket. Perez has a quick release. He and Biggie both will... Not waste any time getting shots up. Stolen away by Sanders, and Sanders is going to go down. And wow, Aaron it's Murphy a great trailing hustled. block. Yes. Great work by Murphy there, and he's hustling back down the court. He's looking for it. Yeah, he was on the right side. What was – I heard – was there something on the floor? I heard Milburn courtside say something. That's why – during play, normally they don't do that. He might have been just so excited about that block by Maybe. Murphy there. <laughs> Couldn't help but say something. True Allen, five on the shot clock, down to Murphy. He's going to go to work. Up and, oh, in and out. Rebound down to McNeil. Great soft release, just a little off target. Wildcats reverse. Sanders. 
Oh, a floater in the middle. Nice bucket by Swilly. Swilly was looking for the call there. Might have gotten a little bit of a contact on this floater, but just settles for the make. Central climb back into it now, 8-6. They were down 6-0. Doesn't take them long to score. They average almost 80 points a ball game. Biggie wants a three, it's long, and we're gonna get a rebound foul on the Wildcats, which will allow the Nighthawks a line change. Yeah, four players coming in. Great. Foul. Fouls on Brzee, his first one. So let's see, who stays for the Nighthawks? Uh, Nathan Perez. Nate Perez. Looks like substitution for the Wildcats is number 22, Colby Jeanette. Perez comes off mid-range jumper, tips in and out. We've got Engler, Reagan, Murphy and Fox on the floor for your Nighthawks. The wraparound to Lloyd. Lloyd wants a scoop. Nope, he's going to give it to Brzee. Nice defense by the Nighthawks. Comes down with a rebound, and Fox will push the action. You can see Lloyd trying to make an act, make an impact very quickly. He's their leading scorer. Comes off the bench. Has only started one game for them, but has been a huge yeah. impact player for them. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. But he'll be one to watch because he's going to play a lot of minutes and he's going to take a lot of shots, and he's a big, big player for the Wildcats. Murphy in the short. Picks it out. Fox, three on the shot clock. Step back three-pointer by Jalen Fox. Is in and out. Rebound pulled down by, that is, Lloyd. So far the Nighthawks not really connecting on those three-point attempts. Three-pointer from the corner is long. Rebound pulled down by Engler. Neither are the Wildcats to, no. to, to, uh, for the Nighthawks' benefit. But, yeah, uh, we're 0 for 8 as a group tonight. Yeah, both these teams struggling <laughs> to connect from three. Murphy up top. Engler has the on-ball screen. Through to Reagan. Reagan floats it, beats the shot clock. Just caught the back of the rim. A lot of tough, soft misses for the Nighthawks so far early. Dawson. Three-pointers on the way, and it's off the back of the rim. Gets his own rebound. Nice job by Gabe Murphy not to foul, but that was a tough finish by Swilly. Swilly following his shot, getting his rebound, and taking it right back up, looking for the contact. Really, really smart play there. Really great basketball play. Gabe Murphy directing traffic out there. Don't really have a true point guard on the floor right now for the Nighthawks. So he has Jay Foxes a bit, but he's moving in the corner mostly on this set. Perez creates his own offense, and he does get that soft floater in the lane to fall. That was a great looking step through. Really good basketball play. Just trying to make it happen right now. Nice backdoor cut on the screen. Mm -hmm. Give uh, Brzee an assist there to Dawson. Yeah, that's a textbook. Drew it up just like that. Ran in practice 15 times exactly. before the game today. <laughs> Really halfway through the first half, and we're tied at 10. It's a great game both, both so far. Both teams playing hard, but pretty clean. It's going to be like this all night, I think. Ooh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Oh, that is the pick and roll to perfection right there. Gabe Murphy with the thunderous slam. He usually doesn't take off from that far away from no. the hoop for those, and so it's, it's even more impressive when you see him do it. I did not see that coming. Oh. oh, and he gets burned, though, on the baseline cut there. Yeah, he got, he got stuck guarding two men. Yeah. It's going to be back and forth. Yep. That's, that was pretty basketball. Engler swims through, and they go to Fox. Fox has Engler in the corner, but then Perez. Ten on the shot clock. We go down to Murphy. It's tipped, tipped off of, tipped off of Murphy. 
And that takes us to our media break. 9.28 to go. We're tied at 12. Right. We'll be back we're after this break. Well, like you said, back and forth, it's gone here ever since the uh, Wildcats overcame that quick 6-0 run by the Nighthawks. Yep, Wildcats stayed, stayed strong, played mature basketball, got themselves back in it. Still waiting for the first made three-pointer of the game, which is yeah. really surprising. Given these, both these teams are pretty – they don't rely upon the three-point shot, but it's, a, it's an important part of their scoring. Yeah, and the Nighthawks shoot the threes as a team at just almost 29%, and the Wildcats are at 33 So Yeah. So you don't expect them to really shoot the lights out. but Right. Which was what was so surprising the last game up there in Ellensburg. Nighthawks yeah. come out in a 2-3 zone trying to stop that baseline switch that's been kind of killed them a couple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the zones only, the, the Wildcats can break the zone by shooting well from three. There is the three, but oh, it's that's an, an air, ball. air ball long. So oh, man. No re reset. Two on the shot clock. Nope, no reset. I don't know what they're asking for. Yeah, smart play by Holden there to bounce the ball off of uh, Biggie Bergeson's leg, but the Wildcats are only going to have two seconds on the shot clock because of the air ball. Oh, nice inbound. Oh. That was a pretty-looking shot. Just caught the back iron. Another rebound for Murphy. True Allen back into the game, as is Bergeson and Fox and Murphy. Hands it off. Got isolation against True against the fadeaway there against Watson, or Dawson, excuse me. The floater, no, and Aaron Murphy's there, but it gets, tip, gets tipped out of bounds by Jeanette. So Nighthawks basketball. Yeah, both these teams work really hard off the glass. You can tell. Even if it doesn't go their way, they're always pursuing that ball. On ball. Here comes Bergeson off of two screens. Catch, shoot, and three. There it is. That's the one that I that I sorely wish we could create a, a, a category of statistic called assist off screen. Yeah. Because both Murphy get brothers got a piece of his man. Yeah. And... It wasn't without that, but that was a nice catch and shoot. Another one here from the top, missed. That one by Hector. Not a big part of his game, but you can tell the Wildcats are trying to, to stick with it and stay in it. He's open. Ball is tipped by the Wildcats, and then good hustle by Jeanette, but he slid out of bounds. So NNU will retain possession, but not before... The eight-minute media timeout. Nighthawks lead it by 3, 15, 12. We'll be back after this break.
out of the timeout, Night, Nighthawks basketball. Fox and Allen back, the backcourt duo for NNU. Aaron Murphy beats his man on the pass. He's going to take it up, and he's going to get called for a charge as a nice defensive play there by Swilly. Yeah, he just outside of that restricted area. Aaron Murphy felt his man cheating a little bit, had yeah. that open, open path to the basket, but uh, maybe got too big of a head of steam there. Yeah. I want to look and see at Nick's position who Swilly was guarding, who he came off of. Yeah. To see who the open man would have been. Oh, very nice. Wow. Yeah, that was a body foul on. But the post-to-post -post screen got Hector open. Yeah, Gabe, Gabe got there quickly, made a good play on the ball, but unfortunately the big body just collided and interfered with the shot, it looks like. Hector's solid free throw shooter at 73, nearly 74%. Yeah, he's been a really great player for them. Kind of has been on the uh, Gabe Murphy path. He's graduated from high school in 2018. So oh, he's been, yeah. He's been, uh, because yeah. of the COVID year and everything, you know, he's uh, he's played yeah, a few different exactly. schools, but uh, he's having a really great year this year for, for Central Washington. Prior to coming to the game tonight, I was watching the Boise State-Fresno State game, and Boise State has a transfer that's in his seventh year of college basketball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we're, but you got COVID and an injury red yep, shirt. Yeah, so yeah. Like, Between those two, you're going to have some players who are really stretching out their eligibility. Nice Ooh. move by True Allen there. And yeah, such a great delay by him. Be patient under the basket. Yep. Sensing where his man is. See, kids, they sh there is still use for a jump stop in basketball. That's right. Hector makes a nice move around the top but misses. Murphy with a rebound. Nighthawks really not trying to press the ball up. You know, they could have maybe had a run out there, but Murphy just held on to it. And well, I'm guessing Coach Hawkins, they don't really want to run with these guys. Yeah. I mean, they, we saw Central early in the season uh, in the preseason tournament, and they like to run. Yeah. Well, you know, they don't have a lot of, of, of size, right. at least compared with the Nighthawks roster, so that makes a lot of sense. The jump hook wow, from Murphy. That's a pretty turnaround there. Nineteen fourteen. There's a screen to try and get Dawson open, and it did. Dawson's going to go one on one against Aaron Murphy. Pull up, rebound down to Murphy. True Allen, like you just mentioned, thirty seconds ago, content to slowly bring it up the floor. Let that shot clock run down. Perez thinks about the three in the corner. Oh, tough, good catch, good pick up again by Murphy. Murphy's going to go up wow. and lay it in. Really great athleticism by Murphy there to keep his balance in midair. Guys falling around him, watching his feet. Jeanette wanted uh, wanted a foul on, on offensive foul, but I think that was a little more of just physics. Well, I think the reality is that that ball bouncing around like yeah. that, you're probably not going to get a call when the ball is not really set in the yeah. hands of the player you're guarding. Nighthawks fall back into the 2-3. Ooh, dangerous skip pass. Oh, wow. Oh, Bergeson with Great the play. steal. Nice. Again, just trusting that his man's going to see what's happening and get to the ball. That's good trust there. Good teamwork. That's the third steal tonight for the Nighthawks. Five out offense. Well, there's sneak. He's, Murphy sneaks in. Ball is tipped out of bounds to the Nighthawks. As True Allen took it in amongst the trees. Substitutions. Three new substitutions for Central Washington. You got Jordan Clark coming in. I think I heard. Yep, Sanders is back. And. Who's the other? Oh, Brzee. Brzee, number back. 44, yep. She's going to inbound here. Going to work. Shot clock. Beats the shot clock. Wow, with looks a like he two. got the shot off. It's a two, but wow, great shot. Rise the buzzer. Nice job. Perez has that quick release you were talking about, Craig, and that yeah. was very much showcased there. 
Another floater is long, this time rebounded to True Allen. You know, Wildcats have had similar struggles that the Nighthawks have had. Some soft shots just, just bouncing in and out. Murphy. Bergeson, he's going to take a three. Wow. Oh, they, go ahead. Go ahead, Biggie. They got, Let him know. Got hit on hit both of his feet, actually. And there was no there was no acting there. He actually yeah. got hit. Not a lot of room to land. Kind of went down. You know, that's what they teach you to do to protect your knees when you're landing on somebody's feet. Yep. So that three-pointer is going to take us to our final media break of the half. We'll come back with Biggie trying to convert the four-point play. We'll be back. Coming out of the break, if you were if you stayed with us and was wa were watching the video, the officials had a review, and we're trying to. Grant, what did you think, maybe? Well, I'm listening for the PA to tell us maybe. Nothing there, and and they are going to give him the and one on that three point attempt. So obviously, I don't I don't know if they were looking at that shot or if it was right. maybe the we were talking about maybe it was the Perez shot at the yeah. the buzzer of the sure. shot clock, but it doesn't look like they've adjusted the score. You know, the one thing I appreciate right there is they did that review during the timeout. And yeah. No one even noticed. I nope. mean, it's, that's really nice. Well, they knew what they were looking for. They obviously yeah. were able to communicate with the video replay, which was great. That was cool. Here's Brzee with the wraparound. Oh, it's McNeil. tough. It's a tough yeah. turnover. Yeah, miscommunication there. You know, Lloyd has come back in for the Wildcats. He's their leading scorer, their best three-point shooter. Shoots 95% mm -hmm. from the free throw line. But it really has not has only played six minutes so far tonight. Right. You know, you never want to speculate too much, but I just wonder if he's um, maybe playing at full health. Yeah, under the weather a little yeah. bit maybe. Here's Perez looking for an opening here. See, this is game plan right here. They're they're waiting until 14 or so on the shot clock. Good find to Murphy. Murphy's going to take it up out. And get oh, they forgot where True was. Oh, oh, True just lost the handle there. We're going to have maybe a jump ball. Yes. Yeah, jump ball. Looks like it'll stay with the Nighthawks. But I don't – with it on a jump ball, is the shot clock going to reset on the jump ball, Craig? I don't think sure. so. Okay, so two seconds to get a shot off here for the Nighthawks. It's going to have to be a quick release here, probably something up in there. Yep. Oh, wow, great oh. play there. <laughs> Good effort that there. That sick. You know, uh, Biggie's got high, high basketball IQ, yeah. having grown up in gyms with his yeah. with his dad's career and obviously his brothers as well. That's just he just has a nose for that ball. Sanders. Oh, Brzee. They leave the ball. He's going to kick it out. Fifteen on the shot clock. No harm done. Great help defense by the Nighthawks there. Here's Lloyd working hard against, and a nice roll for Brzee, and then Biggie with the block shot. Well, he's, he's working stuck hard under the rim. Ball's oh, tipped. Man. After oh. all that, wow, that was a wild possession there. 
You can see Gabe Murphy just absolutely fired up after that defensive stand by the Nighthawks, playing great defense down low. Brzee worked hard for that shot, though. You've <laughs> yeah, got to feel for the guy. <laughs> Gabe up top. Here comes Coach Hawkins wants a foul on the hold. Floater on the baseline for Perez is good. It's a pretty shot. Boy, I tell you what, shot. that's a glimpse into the future for the Nighthawks with Perez. Yeah. And that is a nice bucket. A timeout is called after the made bucket. Is it a 30-second timeout? It is a 30, I think. 30 yep. seconds. Referee signaling 30-second timeout. And it was called by Coach Renta. Wildcats, Nighthawks now have extended this lead to 15, mainly because the Wildcats are in a scoring drought right now. Yeah. Their last bucket was at the 10:31 mark, so it has been over eight, eight minutes, minutes. Yeah. man. And I mean, you know, I just did math really yeah, fast. Yeah, you did. That was great. Thank you. Impressive. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, the Nighthawks have just really been playing great defense. And, yeah. You know, that's something that took some time for the, the defensive identity of the Nighthawks to really yeah. come into focus this season. Yeah. But it has been much stronger during this last stretch of great conference play by the Nighthawks. And um, I'm sure that's part of what really burned them up early in the season in Ellensburg uh, yeah. when they were playing in that game. But uh, the Wildcats have also been getting some good looks. So it's, it's also just a tough just night. Yeah, yeah, just just some tough well, misses. Life on the road. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. Nighthawks fall back into the 2-3 again. Lloyd thinks about a long three. You got to respect that from him, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Here's Sanders. There's a three pointer up, and it's off the back of the rim. And again, he follows his own shot. Uh, That's Clark. Well coached. The Wildcats are well coached by Coach Brandon Rinto over there. Ball goes over the rim, or excuse me, over the backboard for Swilly. Again, that's that's one of those plays that's just a tough break for the night for the Wildcats, yeah. Wildcats there. Yep. Some great offensive play, some great ball movement, that open shot. That's how you got to beat the zone is shoot the three. But unfortunately for the Wildcats, it's just not falling right now. Here's the wraparound from Murphy again at the high post. They double Aaron Murphy, kick it out to True. True's going to go to work to the elbow. Back to Biggie. Biggie's going to step back. Three long rebound, wow, offensive it's a great rebound. great rebound. Strong off the glass there for Murphy. And a new 20, and the Nighthawks will bring it back out. This is where the, the Nighthawks size is going to help them if they want to hang on to this lead long term this game. Is that offensive rebounding. True Allen uses quickness back to Biggie. He's going to go turn around jumper in and out. They fight for the rebound. It's won by Clark. Clark over to Swilly. Ooh, nice crossover. Oh, wow, he should have just taken yeah, that shot. Yeah, he was a little unselfish there. Yeah, I'm, actually, he got his... gl I'm actually glad they, he scored because yeah, good for him. it was a very unselfish play, and it caught his teammate by surprise. Yeah, no, that was a great play there by Swilly underneath, just yeah. really cooking on the handle and uh, trying to get the assist, but yeah. got his own rebound yeah, and made the shot. Exactly. So good for him. Good work. Good play there. 30-second timeout called by Coach Hawkins. As uh, it's kind of a user to lose it situation there, so you might as well use that timeout. And uh, 37, 38.7 ticks off the clock left, and your Nighthawks still lead it by 13. Yeah, I'm sure the Nighthawks are probably going to draw something up here to use as much time as possible, unless they yeah. want to go for a two for one. But That's, I don't know how that, common that is here. For uh, the, for the yeah, Nighthawks I don't team. know, it, especially with the way they've obviously game plan to run clock. So right. I would think they pro I don't. I would be shocked if they wanted to go two for one. Yeah. So. So expect a pretty probably just a typical possession for the yeah. Nighthawks so far tonight is uh, moving the ball around the perimeter, maybe seeing if you can get a, a, a cut in, off a screen to, to the middle of the key or yeah. an outside shot because those have been falling ever since we were talking about some of those things. Yeah. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the Nighthawks have only made two threes still. Right. Looks like we're shooting two for uh, nine. Yeah, two for 17 with both oh, teams yeah. tonight. Both yeah. Teams. Sorry, you were doing math. I Sorry. was. You know, <laughs> not as fast as you, though, Craig. <laughs> Biggie, he'll take the three from the left side. Okay, so they went away for a quick. Oh, man, oh, yeah, they're going to get him get there. Gabe on the rebound foul, and that is only the third only foul the th on yeah. the Nighthawks. And second, two of those three are on Gabe Murphy, and then only three fouls on the Wildcats. You mentioned earlier that it was we everyone was playing hard, but it was pretty clean and nice basketball to watch, and you're, you weren't wrong. No, it's been this, this half has been moving on along at a really quick clip. Perez with the defense 20, so the shot clock is off. You got to be careful there. Well, I don't know if it looks like maybe they meant to do yeah, that. Yeah, I think so too. 
to break up the break up the flow, maybe. Yeah, that that looked like he went out there with the intention to do that. He was pressuring really hard and first foul on Perez. Okay. We'll see if the Nighthawks can can come out with a clean sheet on this possession. Two three zone again. Got Machado in the middle. Oh, oh and then a steal. Another steal. And There's the push. Up. And then a three-pointer at the buzzer Ooh. is missed by True Allen. But I tell you what, if you'd have told Coach Hawkins, yeah. hey, you're going to be up 29-16 at the half, yeah. he'd have grabbed it and ran away. The game plan's working for the Nighthawks <laughs> yes, tonight for sure, and uh, we'll see how they do with second half, if they can replicate that success. We're going to take a break for the half, so Grant and I will be back and bring you the second half action in about 15 As minutes. We get ready to
Well, Grant, taking a look at the statistics from the first half, my question is, at what point do the Nighthawks need to be ready for the Wildcats to mount their, <laughs> to come roaring back? Because I have a feeling it's coming. Oh, that's right. I mean, it's a, a, some of it was fluky shooting. Some of it was good defense by the Nighthawks. But right. there's no way that the that Central Washington is going to keep shooting 26% from the floor. They're, they're a yeah. good team. They're, there's yeah. not... It's not a fluke that they're in fourth place just by a game out of right. third place uh, with the with the with the Nighthawks sitting in third in the conference standing. So, yeah, the the Wildcats are well coached. You know, we know Coach Brandon Rinta from his time here in Nampa. Oh, at one yeah, point definitely. in time, he's a he's a great coach. I'm sure he's he's talking his guys up right now, helping them understand that they can stay calm and just got to stick with their game plan. Yep. The shots are going to fall for them. The question is if the Nighthawks are going to be able to to match the intensity, to right. keep it up the rest of the game. The one thing that uh, Kerry and I have talked about, especially this probably in the last six games, um, have been the Nighthawks' maturity this season is as they have grown and learned to play with the lead. Mm -hmm. And that has been something that's been super fun to watch yeah. as a fan and in broadcasting. It's just it's fun to watch their maturity in that. Yeah. So this will be a good test of that as well because yep. you know there's going to be a hit, a run that's going right. to come, and it's the response to that. Yeah. And you have to assume if the game plan continues for the Nighthawks, if they, if they keep scoring and are able to stretch out those mm -hmm. possessions using the shot clock to the fullest extent, yeah, um, they should be able to play with that lead as long as they don't lose their composure for that inevitable central run. As you mentioned earlier, the Nighthawks are third at 9-4 and four and Central is fourth at 8-5. and five. So this game will end up being a pivotal game for seeding uh, in the upcoming GNAC tournament. That's right. The Wildcats won that first matchup up in Ellsberg too, so it's big for NNU if they want to – to get that seating over Central. Yeah, to hold court, it'll be important. Here's Sanders inside. They're going to kick it out. A three-pointer's on the way, and it's in and out for Hector. Hector had a pretty quiet first half as well. He's a dominant player for the Wildcats, a big player here. I'm sure he'll probably receive some all-conference recognition at some point at the end of the season. True Allen, right side, goes to the baseline with the trees. <laughs> but Aaron Murphy came for a little bit of a pressure release. Oh, nice move by Aaron. Oh, bounced around, controlled by Sanders. Tough to try to finish with that left hand. You got to put it in there. A little soft miss there, in and out. It's good ball movement by Central there. Tipped by True Allen, out of bounds. And then he's got those quick hands. Helps them out on that defensive end when they're getting beat occasionally by passes here and there. Ball will be brought in bounds by Clark. Nighthawks are into that 2-3 zone, so Coach Hawkins liked the way that looked. Yeah, switching back and forth between man and zone is going to really throw Central off balance, though. And there's that soft skip pass that's picked off by the Nighthawks. On ball. Pick and roll. The thing about the size advantage for the Nighthawks is they have been able to try to look inside a little more often. True Allen, the long floater, almost tipped in by Murphy, but controlled by Central. That speaks to Hector's skill there under the basket, boxing out a bigger guy and still uh, interfering with his attempted putback. Ball is through the hands of Hector, turned over oh. to... You know, you mentioned Kerry earlier, Craig. Uh, we know he'll be back. He's a world traveler. He likes to <laughs> reference where he yeah. goes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the real question is, when he's over in India, do they have enough Internet service to pick up the – the, I know they do. Oh, man, but, it looks like Biggie's oh, down. No. He hit his ankle there. He's got time. Oh, that's a bummer. He looks like he's okay. He, yeah, he looks – that's the grimace of annoyance rather than injury. Isn't Did he, I didn't see if he came down on the other player or not. He's maybe a little upset that he didn't get a call. Yeah. I think he's going to have to come out, though. If they stop the game for him, I think he's got to. Yeah, I'm not sure how that r that rule works at this level. Most most situations, right, you got to come out if they're stopping it for you. Looks like he's. Oh, they're not. They're going to they're let him. He's all right. Stay, so. Yeah, well. Good we'll news. It, it looked a little more. Looked a little worse than it was, maybe. Yeah. Nighthawk 17 on the shot clock. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Kerry's able to watch this game from uh, wherever he is, hanging out with Bengali Tigers. 
Here's True Allen down the middle, high off the glass, wow. and it's good. Man, that's his game. It's such an interesting – the evolution of his game so yeah. far as a college athlete has been utilizing that glass at various angles has been really impressive. Floater on the baseline is missed. <laughs> All those Murphy brothers, six. just <laughs> they are just aggressive, sometimes with each other even. <laughs> that's seven rebounds for Gabe now. Aaron's got five – or excuse me, three. Fox with the pick and roll. They're going to reverse it, and they're going to run it from the left side. Shot clock winding down. Big E off the dribble. We're going to get a hand check foul on Sanders. They haven't called many of those. No, no that's the first one. So we'll see if they start calling that a little tighter up at the top. We might be in for a few more team fouls this half. Yeah. Substitutions coming for Central Washington. Here comes... Jello Lloyd and Brzee. Fresh 20 on the shot clock for the foul. Murphy to Murphy, there's a back cut. Oh, Jalen Fox with the beautiful, beautiful baseline move. And super quick step in the ends to the inside, and then with that left hand. Really skilled play there. Sanders into the key. Stolen away by Bergeson. That's steal number seven for the Nighthawks yeah, tonight. Yeah, man, that's just one of their best defensive statistical categories. They are really good, quick hands, disrupting passing lanes. True Allen makes the decision to bring it out, and reset the offense from scratch. And that's a, that's one of the Central's keys right there. Is they're gonna they're going to double Biggie. Oh, good hustle as Aaron Murphy stepped on the baseline before the save. Murphy's frustrated there. He was able to get that nice spin, no foul call, yeah. but then wasn't able to finish and then right. tried to get that, that, that tip back inside, but just wasn't mm -hmm. able to. And at least, you know, I mean, I don't think he got fouled, so I think he was frustrated, but it was like, okay, play the next play. Yeah. You know, and he, luckily he was there to, for that save to try. Yeah, you know, he's looking for that finish, and he oh, didn't, yeah. didn't quite get it. And, oh, wow, another, another man just, just really disrupting those passing lanes. Oh, and that'll be another steal for the Nighthawks as it went off the elbow. Jalen Fox with the finish. With the finish with the with the right hand. That is yeah. not his dominant hand. Yeah. Something he and True both are able to do really well is finish with their offhand, which is the right hand, which mm -hmm. is, I, I think, sometimes deceptive for defenders. The Nighthawks have come out, maintained the lead, and that takes us to a timeout called by Brandon Renta. It'll also be a media timeout, so we'll take a break as well. Nighthawks lead at 35-16. We'll be back. Out of the break, Wildcats will have the basketball. Just got to stay calm if you're the Wildcats. Yeah, Both the shots will keep will start to fall, but you are running a little bit of risk with the time continuing to tick down. Nighthawks have started the half on a 6-0 run. Here's Brzee in the short corner. Nighthawks in the 2-3 zone, and they're trying to trap. Whoa, oh, beautiful, beautiful find there by Brzee. Is that Clark that went? Yeah. That's Clark. Got loose there. Stayed patient under there. Did a good job, too, not, not getting underneath the player coming down. He's able to land on his feet. And they're going to go ahead and burn the 16-minute media timeout. So another quick break. 
with 15-18 to go. We'll be right back. Free throws for Jordan Clark as we come out of the timeout. Clark is a 69.2% free throw shooter nice. on the season. First one's good. Nice crowd here tonight, Grant, as the camera pans back and forth. They can see the bleachers. Yeah, we've got a, a lot of, of, uh, of attendees here out from the community, but also uh, we can see across the way from us a, a pretty good contingent from Central Washington yeah. is here. You know, it's an important game for them. It's cool that they, uh, they mustered a crowd to come down and support their team. It's always nice to have a full house to play for for both these teams. Here comes Allen across the top side. Ten on the shot clock. Perez comes through the double screen. He'll take the three from straight away. Oh, man. Oh, in and Just out. Just touched every part of the rim there, Craig. Rebound for Brzee. He was looking shot the whole way as he came loose there. Lloyd, one-on-one -on -one against Allen to the baseline. It's stolen. Oh, man. And Here now we go. Aaron Murphy's going to take it down. Take it up. Oh, oh boy. That's going to be – that's going to be – I didn't even hear a whistle. Yeah, that's a – the tough foul. Did you hear a whistle? Uh, well, you I, know, I think. I, I seriously don't think I heard a whistle. I think the referee was so concerned about it. They're going to have a review here. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. You know, it's hard because, uh, let's see, 33. Sanders is was moving pretty quick yeah, trying to was. find defense. It's pretty there. athletic play, too. So Yeah, and and, uh, and Aaron kind of double clutched on his, on did, his gather. Yeah, so, right. you know, I don't. On first look, at least, live, that didn't yeah. look like Sanders was really trying to, no, to no, hurt him. No, 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 no. Big contact, though, because a couple big bodies just yeah. hit him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you've, um, you've got – oh, shoot, the, I just missed the replay. Yeah, the they replay were, just kind of yeah, came they're, through they're quickly both, there. They're both well put together. So Here's I, the replay. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Sanders got up really yeah, – he did. Really got up early and, and wouldn't nice. have been able to stop if, if Murphy no, had uh -huh. gone up. So I don't. I, I'd be surprised if they came out with anything me more too, severe than me a too. Foul yeah, here. because I think it looked worse than it was yeah. for sure. Because yeah, I mean, there's no. I don't think there's any ill intent whatsoever. No, so. Sanders really did get up though to try to make a play off of that. Yeah, and Aaron, what, you know, <laughs> what yeah. impressed me was well, <laughs> first of all, how high up they all they both were. Yeah, and then secondly is then it's like oh boy we got to land. <laughs> yeah, they both got to come down, and that wood is not any softer the no. higher you jump. No, no. No, man, that was that was interesting to see. Looks yeah. like looks like Murphy's up and is okay too. Yeah, he's, he's just fine. Kind of and shaking it off. The cool part was nobody came up like angry. No, it was no. just like, hey, we were playing basketball. It's yeah, no big deal. Nobody overreacted. Everybody yeah. was cool. It was so. Yeah, it's good, good to see. Be. It's good to see that this has honestly been a really good, clean game so oh, far, yeah. Craig. I mean, yeah, both teams have played hard. Really haven't gotten too too caught up in the foul game because no. both teams play good defense. They yeah. really do. And so yeah. give up about the same number of points per game on, on their season average there. The only reason I could see that maybe they may switch it to a, a flagrant one would be if he inadvertently caught any part of the, like, any part of yeah. air. And I only see in two quick replays. I, yeah. can, I can't tell. If I it mean, looks like he wasn't making a full play on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I feel like he was. I mean, I feel like he was because he was. He his swing was aiming right where 
that layup was going to go. Yeah. So it was like. Yeah, he caught up to Aaron yeah. in plenty of time. Felt like he was close enough to make a play on the basketball. Didn't yeah. look like he was just trying to do something out of desperation. But we'll see what the referees say. Yeah, here we go. Mm. Well, they have changed it to a flagrant one. But that's a tough call. Yeah. It's a bang bang play. It but, is. You know, the refs have have the re have the replay to take sure. a look at. Yeah. Well, that's a tough one for Sanders. You know, he's it trying is. to make a, a, a tough play there. Yeah. First free throw is good. But if you're a Nighthawks fan, you know it's another chance to put to put uh, Aaron at the line and, and a flagrant one. They're going to get possession of the ball. Yeah. The other thing too is is um, as the officials explain it to both coaches. Oh. Yeah, um, and the other thing too is you know the officials are are there's a little bit of a mandate to what they have to call yeah. some things like so if there's any kind of contact with, right you know who knows but they, I mean they're doing an awesome job so tonight they've they've called a great clean game let oh, both man. these teams play so we get we get a free throw out of that here comes True Allen on the possession Ferguson's going to go to work Perez. In the lane, the floater by Perez is off the back of the rim, and it's rebound, and then a foul on Aaron Murphy as Aaron and Clark collide. Yep, Aaron just is a, is a is a bulldog going for that ball. Yeah, he is such a big guy when he runs into a smaller player like Clark, he's going to send him flying, even yeah. if he doesn't mean to make contact in a in an intentional way. So we got Jalen Fox and Gabe Murphy back in, gives True Allen and uh, Mason Machado a break. Yeah, and you know what we didn't talk about on that big contact on that fast break play mm -hmm. is Coach Renta doing the right thing, pulling Sanders out off the floor, oh, sure. maybe for yeah. a possession or two, just let making it, sure to de-escalate any, any potential, yeah. you know, misunderstanding or, or whatever might have uh, might yeah. have happened there. So that's that's great coaching too by Coach Renta. Nighthawks fall back into that two three zone underneath. It's a mismatch down there, but Br Brzee, double team there. And then a, a tip. Oh, but a recovery by Central. Baseline penetration, kicked out. Three-pointers on the way. It's long rebound down to Murphy. Yeah, and the Wildcats still looking for their first made three of the game, which is just a tough way to try to make a living in the in a game like this. Here's Fox. Murphy. The kick out and back. There's the two-man game. Murphy. Gabe's going to go to work. Baseline side, left-handed floater Man. is almost undefendable. That is just such a pretty basketball move by Murphy there. Oh, beautiful look for Lloyd. Yeah, see, and that's that's what you kind of uh – -huh. I was kind of coming in expecting to see more often from Lloyd tonight. That's his first bucket. So a good job by the Nighthawks on the leading scorer. Here's Perez. Ferguson on ball, two-man game with Gabe. There's the roll. Two passes, finds Gabe down underneath. Right-handed jump hook is missed just off the back of the rim. They got the mismatch, and they got it, got him the ball, so that's all you can ask. Mm -hmm. I'm not still going with their game plan. Wow, Ooh. that's a great <laughs> drive there. Holden. The crossover. Really pretty play right in the middle of the key. So that's four, a 4-0 run by Central here. So here, this may be the this may be the push that we've been anticipating. Mm -hmm. Nighthawks not still sticking with their game plan, though, kind of using the clock up. That's a travel. Yep, yeah. it is. Yeah, it's a step-step gather and then another step after that. Substitutions in four. That is Dawson and Hector. Going to give Brzee and Clark a breather. This is going to be one of the better lineups for the Wildcats. Mm -hmm. I think they've got their four leading scorers all in right now. You know, they have the two in Lloyd and uh, and Hector, but then they have four more players who average eight or nine points a game on their roster. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see. This might be that run that we were talking about, Craig. Dawson, he's a 6'5", 210-pound guard. And that, he he's is a, a load, man. Yes, he's a linebacker playing point right now <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the Wildcats. Speaking of, he's got it at the free throw line. Now Hector one-on-one -on -one against Murphy. And wow, a body is. push foul. 
I think that's what they're going to call with the chest. Yeah. Yep. So that's a second foul, I think. Is that two or three on it Gabe? might be the third on Gabe there. Three. Yeah. yeah. And that will take us to our 12-minute media break, 11.58 to go. When we come back, Central Washington at the line for the three-point play. We'll be back. Out of the break, the three-point play opportunity for Hector is what will bring us back to action here. Nighthawks have returned to the starting lineup of Fox, Allen, Bergeson, and Murphy. And Murphy. This feels like an important moment in this game, Craig. We talked about this potential for the Wildcats to make a run and get mm -hmm. back in it, and uh, it definitely has shifted. The momentum has been in the Wildcats' favor the last couple minutes of gameplay. And that's a 7-0 run for Central Washington. Nighthawks lead it by just 13 now. Largest lead was 20. Which, my math is correct. That means it's a 7-0 run. Yep. Wow. Shocking. Good work. You're on a roll thank, tonight, thank Craig. You, on thank that. you. Holden with it. Kicks it out to the corner. Here's Lloyd with the skip pass. Hector thought about a three. Holden again. And you talked about this being an effective line out, lineup. They're playing a five out, really, because yeah. Hector has spent most of his time around the ring. Oh, and a miss rebounded down to the Nighthawks. That was a nice back cut by Really Jeanette. good. Yeah, really not not a great stand by the Nighthawks defense, a back cut that was pretty open, and, yeah. and really they just got lucky on that just soft miss. It. Yeah. Ergeson up top. Allen. There's looks, looks for the high low, but Bergeson's going to take it off. Three pointers on the way, and it is missed. Oh, oh and Gabe went down Murphy's and is holding, down, his, holding knee. his knee. I don't know if we had a knee to knee contact. So we're, he waved off the shot and called a foul. Yeah. So no shot there. We got a foul, and that'll be out um, up on the elbow. So it'll be baseline out of bounds. But it looks so like Central Gabe. Washington ball. Yeah, yeah. Foul on that drive by True, but. Murphy is holding his knee, and it is. Yeah, he's hurting. Yeah, he's down. Didn't see the the activity. He he went down before the shot came off the rim. Yeah, lo this looks good. Looked like a contact. It, you know, yeah, it may be like a knee to knee thing. Which you would, if of anything that you would, I mean, you never would yeah, hope for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's one thing if it's kind of coming down and, yeah. and you worry about the stability play there right. on the knee. But if it's yeah. uh, if it's simply a contact thing, yeah, yeah. He, he's he's putting he, quite a bit of weight yeah, on that. Yeah, he you is. Know? Yeah. There we go. A guy as big as Gabe isn't isn't going to put any weight. If yeah, it's, if it's yeah, hurting, yeah. Hurting. You're going to need a lot more people to help him off the court if it's really a structural <laughs> issue. You know, he's just a he's oh, just yeah. a big man. And, he's and, a big dude. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And he's he's supporting himself mostly coming off the court there. Nice. So nice. We'll hope that that's just a. Um, Yes. Maybe a, a, tish, a soft tissue injury, not nothing, nothing huge in, cert, in terms of his structure, but that's even emotionally now for the Nighthawks. That's he's one of those heart and soul guys. Yeah, we I refer to him as the mayor of NNU. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how the Nighthawks can kind of keep their momentum here, stay focused. Lost the ball going up oh, there. Oh, Hector got it back though. Hector's going to go up and yeah. score. 
Hector's feeling himself a little bit now, and that's, yeah. that was he's going to show off a little bit of, of that skill that he has. Nighthawks in a little bit of a drought, about three minutes here. We're going to get a foul before no shot. the shot. Last field goal for the Nighthawks was at the 13:38 mark, so yeah. we're three and a half minutes. So they came out there quick, looking to get a hit there. And uh, you know, at the NBA level, I think Aaron probably gets that and one call. Sure. But, uh, but it probably was the right call to not include include the attempt in the foul. Looking for the inbounds. Good pressure release by Bergeson. Machado with the wrap. And True Allen just Man, baited, him, just baited his just way to the free throw savvy, line right there. Savvy play there by True. Because the three-point shot is obviously something True will take, but it's really not the, the essence of his game no, because he's shooting under 20% for the year. Yeah. But from the free throw line, um, I mean, True realizes we need points on the board right now to stop the run. Yeah, you need to do something to kind of slow that momentum that the Wildcats are, cats are feeling here. And, the oh, oh, in and out. Nighthawks still lead it by 11. And that ends it at a 7-0 run over the last three minutes and 37 seconds for Central Washington. Here's Swilly. Dawson takes it into the lane, and they find Sanders, who makes the layup. Another great baseline cut. Yep. Ten-point game with just under ten minutes to go. And True Allen was able to find the seam in the defense. He's arguing that he wants a body foul, but, uh, you know, late in February, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna have to. It's gonna take more it's, than that to get men's, that call. It's men's basketball yeah. in late February. Yep. And a great help side block there by uh, by Hector. Yeah. Here's Machado. He's got the double. He's looking for the open man. Here's the rotation. That's where it's gonna be a little different from Machado down. Wow, yeah. it's a great floating shot there. But that's where it's a little different feeding that ball to Machado than it is into into Murphy. Gabe Murphy yeah. there. But the good thing is, you know, Machado brings his own set of skills because he, he is so quick. Yes, he is, and, and he's a tough player. And people will sleep on his jumping ability right. too. No, he's a he's a great athlete, tough, tough player yeah. too. So I'm sure he is ready for this moment to oh, come yeah. in as uh, as we still wait to hear what's what the story is with Gabe Murphy and his his going down with a knee injury earlier. So the Nighthawks spread it, 15 now on the shot clock. They start the offense. Here's Perez off the bounce to the elbow. Biggie's going to come around, and he's going to take the floater off wow. the lane. And right there, that is. Oh, but is, Biggie's also down holding his knee, too, that's, here. That's evenings That's evenings in the driveway is what that so, is right there. Uh, looks oh, like maybe cramp. hopefully just a cramp on yeah, that. We already have a trainer there helping Ooh, him with the cramp. He's not feeling good, though. I, I don't know. That, that was a great shot. Yeah, it was. A fantastic banking shot. And like you said, driveway shot. Yeah. But, man, we've had a couple scary couple bad scary luck. plays where Nighthawks have hit the ground and yeah. really not come back up. Ooh, man, he doesn't. They are man, working on that calf. Something's really. I see hope that's just a cramp. But he see is writhing my, over I there. I can see them pushing back on his toe. So. Yeah. And you know what? I know that feeling because in the middle of the night, <laughs> I will yeah. wake up with my arch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've all, all of us have been there who have maybe been a little little dehydrated, exactly. pushed our bodies a little Perhaps bit. I'm not sure what you're doing in the middle in, of the night. Your, your, your feet arches are No, are no, no, it's, it's from, it's from like, you know, playing golf in the yes, daytime right. and then walking and then yep. in the middle of the night <laughs> wakes yep. my wife up because I'm screaming yep. in pain. Yep, yep. <laughs> Okay, it looks like they're getting him taken care of here. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard if you're watching online. You can't see oh, this. Oh, yeah, but, they don't have that camera But Biggie is, is is lying just about a foot, maybe two feet off the baseline down <laughs> down on the on the oh, end of the court. He's back up. The, the cramp feet. let go. No, nope. uh, but he is he is kind of straight. They're doing that awkward we, straight we leg walk. walk. Yeah. It looks like yeah. you're wearing ski boots. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's 
Yeah, it looks uh, like he's okay though. He's got a looks I like he's got a salt packet. I he's, don't wish that pain on anybody. Oh man, no, it's 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 the worst. You know, my my worst cramps I can remember were came after you know long long bus rides after football uh -huh. games. And, yeah. And your hamstrings just seize up, and there's nowhere to go. Man. Exactly. It's it can be excruciating for sure. You're so. laying in the you're laying in the middle aisle of a bus trying to get your leg to. <laughs> oh yeah, cramp. absolutely. Yeah. Central Washington ball after the break. One four low out of bounds. Hector hands it off to Swilly. Swilly's going to work down the middle. He gets the floater. That was pretty. Great play. Swilly's Ooh. feeling himself too. These Wildcats are shooting with way more confidence right now. Mm -hmm. Continuing to attack the hoop. And we've got eight minutes left, so we'll see how long that this uh, this run will last for them and, and see if they can extend it to the end. Machado back to Allen. Here comes Perez. Oh, oh Perez he loses, loses the ball, loses the but, handle. but looks gets like it, it back. Looks like it went off the leg of the, the Wildcat defender there. Four on the shot clock. Going to shoot a three. Oh, True Allen You know, one. you were just mentioning how True's not a great three-point shooter, but that doesn't mean he lacks confidence. No. And, uh, and he looked good there. And here comes Gabe Murphy looking ready to check back in, it looks like. So that's good news for, for really, Nighthawks fans. really good news. Here's rotation. Oh, nice ball movement by the Wildcats. Hector's going to go to work against Machado. Goes baseline with the floater. Misses. Rebound off to Machado. Some great defense there by the Nighthawks. Machado doing great one-on-one, -on -one, but then great help side defense by True on the baseline. Aaron Murphy at the top. Nighthawks are going to keep playing their game using the yep. whole shot clock. Now down to single digits. Here's Jalen Fox around to Perez. He's going to take a floater. It's an air ball. Rebounded down to, that is, Sanders. Swilly. Nighthawks 2-3 zone again. Jump stop. Floater is just off, but an offensive rebound. They're going to call it on the rebound coming down. Yeah. So it'll be, not, it'll be uh, Wildcats basketball. Foul is on Machado. And that'll take us to a media break. Nighthawks lead at 46-31. We'll be back. Coming out of the break, Nighthawks lead it by 15. Inbounds for Clark. He's got Hector close. Lloyd will take it to the opposite baseline. Here's Swilly with the basketball. Plays it. Takes the three, it's long, rebounds tipped and then controlled by Aaron Murphy. So Murphy and Man, Murphy and Sanders is such a great matchup. Yeah. It's been fun watching them. You know, they're playing each other really well, playing hard. Yeah. They're both really, really good athletes. Yeah, they are. Here's Bergeson. Fox ducks under. There's Gabe back on the floor for the Nighthawks. The left-handed jump hook. Oh, just a little too far out. Air ball rebound down to Hector. Six minutes to go. Hector. Here's Clark. 
On ball to Sanders. Here's Sanders one on one in the lane. Pump fake up and he's gonna catch. Kind of a bad luck thing for Gabe Murphy is Sanders was able to catch Murphy's right arm for the contact. Yeah, Sanders did the right thing. He the athletic led, led, move, led like high, said. led high with the elbow, found the contact. Even though Gabe's hands were up, but you know, just mm -hmm. just instigated that contact. That's the fourth on Gabe, so that's tough for him. He's gonna have to play carefully the rest of the way, or, or Coach Hawkins got to be creative about his substitution game. Here comes Easton Reagan. He's gonna get Murphy, and they'll play they'll play four guards now around Aaron Murphy. Yeah. But as we were talking about, Sanders has really kind of been that feature forward this game with uh, with Hector yeah. not having as great of a game as usually, although he right. has had a huge impact the last 10 minutes or so. Here's Sanders at the free throw line. Knocks it down. So 12-point game. Had a three on two there, but they're going to yeah. continue to wait, waste away those those seconds as they go. This has been the Nighthawks game plan all night. Central will probably want to pick up a couple fouls because they may want to, if they want to go for the foul to control possessions to try and take advantage of, of maybe poor free throw shooting perhaps, but they but they don't have seven fouls. Ooh, the long and three that's, that's that, by Lloyd. That, that's the first three-pointer of the night for the Wildcats, and Lloyd is the one I would have put money on to do it. Yeah. If he gets hot from outside, this game could get close really quickly. Yeah, it's down under under double digits now with a nine-point lead. Here's Reagan. Aaron Murphy at the top. Bergeson comes around. He's going to go into the lane and take it up off the glass. He misses it, and Aaron Murphy's hustling for the rebound. But the Wildcats control it. Aaron's going to be slow coming back down the floor, kind of hit his head Three a little bit. Three-pointers on, the, on the way, and now it's good for Clark. It's a great and shot. And now it's a six-point game, and Coach Hawkins wants a timeout. So that's the run we've been waiting for. Yeah. Because we knew Central had it, had it tucked in there somewhere. And uh, we've got a ball game on our hands now, 46 to 40, with four minutes and 40 seconds to go. It's a full timeout, so we'll take a break, and we'll be back. Ferguson will inbounds for the Nighthawks. We're in for a really good four minutes and 40 seconds of game time here. Perez with the basketball. He and uh, Drew Allen will divide the point guard duties when they're both on the floor. Here comes True. Reversal around to Biggie, 10 on the shot clock. Biggie's going to take it to the baseline and draw the foul but miss the bucket, and he's angry with himself that he didn't finish that. It was a great dribble drive. You know, he's been working that right side of the floor mm -hmm. this half, and, uh, yeah, just really just barely missed finishing that for the and one, and he'll shoot two instead. Bergeson is the leading scorer for the Nighthawks at 13.2 points a ball game. Got 11 tonight. Now make it 12. Yeah. The Nighthawks have four guys averaging double digits, and so you expect to see them kind of sharing the ball a lot. But, yeah, Bergeson is probably the best true three-point shooter on the mm -hmm. team. Yeah, he's shooting the threes at 34.6%, and his free throws are just under uh, 70. Oh, excuse me. I, I Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Reverse and the feet got tangled up yeah, that's for a tough McNeil. Call. That'll be our first one and one of the night as that's the seventh team foul on the Nighthawks. So one plus the bonus for Cameron McNeil. McNeil's 6'5 senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, 
attended Radford University before transferring in for the Wildcats. First one's up and good. McNeil, a pretty good free throw shooter, so you expect him to convert these. Yeah. Rebounding battle tonight um, is really where Central Washington is. They, we were up by four at the half, and now the rebounding is 31-30 yeah. in favor of Central. So a little more of an emphasis on the boards and also a little bit a little bit slower shooting for the Nighthawks. Offers well, the, up some extra rebounds. Well, we talked about how the uh, the Wildcats had not hit a three until recently, but yeah. the, the Nighthawks have not shot the three well either. They're only mm -hmm. three for 15 tonight, and now with two makes, just one less for the Wildcats. Ferguson misses the floater. Rebound down to Hector. 3.30 to go in the ballgame. Lloyd. Lloyd's going to cross it over and take a long three, and it's missed. Rebound down. We're going to get a turnover. And everybody on that half of the floor, what they wanted a little push about why did Aaron fly out of bounds. So it, I think it was momentum. Yeah. And no, because no one, no one who's sitting on that part of the floor as a fan was yelling. No. They could yeah. see what happened. Well, you know, Lloyd knew that it was a pretty bad miss off of his hand because he, yeah. he took off to follow that uh -huh. shot right away. Yeah. And he might have he might have contacted uh, Aaron Murphy a little bit there, but yeah. Aaron does tend to really have a lot of momentum, momentum when he leaps yeah. and comes down for that ball. So it's it's a tough one, and I think for us it's hard to see from up here it where is, we are. Totally. And I, I always look at the the crowd that's closest to the action, and no one in that whole section was 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 appealing at all. It yeah. was like, oh yeah, he was just going that way. Yeah, but this Nighthawks home crowd, you know, they're going to be really upset when oh, yeah. when it looks like there's not a. <laughs> it looks like uh, maybe there was a, a reason for for Aaron to go out besides his own momentum. Yeah, in the second half here, as we were in the timeout, Central Washington is shooting 47 percent here yeah. in the second half, even yeah. though just two of seven from the three. But 9 of 19 overall, so they've mm -hmm. uh, really picked it up. While your Nighthawks are at 31%, and they shot just under 35, 38%, excuse me, in the first half. So, mm -hmm. so uh, that statistics back up what you were talking about a couple minutes ago. Right. And it's so it's going to be really interesting to see. You know, obviously um, uh, Lloyd was really kind of testing himself there with that deep three. Yeah. Because that was about from where he made it earlier uh -huh. uh, this half, but. Pretty bad miss there, so you don't know if that's going to help him long term or if he maybe is going to think twice about it in the next shot. Shot clock stayed at 13 for the Wildcats. Oh, and there's a turnover and a pickup by True Allen, and he's going to take it all the way up and miss the layup. No contact, so Central's going to push. It's a two-on-two, -two. and Gabe Murphy is not whistled. He did not foul. Nice job by Gabe going straight up. Yeah, that was a tough, smart play by Gabe. It's very tempting to get in that into that player a little more aggressively but he knows he's got four fouls and that player probably anticipating contacts so right that here comes a missed layup on both ends of the court and the Nighthawks have it with 10 on the shot clock true Allen into the lane and misses the layup and rebound down to Hector that's a tough one there's Clark with the basketball guarded by Bergeson Bergeson did a nice job taking away the baseline now we've got Sanders in the mismatch. Oh, and True Allen picks off the pass. He's going to take it all the way up and off the glass. Ooh, oh, big play there. The bucket and the foul. That patience really smart by True. You know, he's kind of rushed maybe his last couple layup attempts. He takes a second and then utilizes the contact. Yep. Man, that is just a, a really smart basketball play. And that's the second time tonight we've seen the old school fundamental jump stop Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I mean, and you don't really see that a lot. No, you, you know, know, guys are trying to always – a lot of times guys are trying to make the big statement athletic right. play, go yeah. up, finish hard. Yep. But sometimes that, oh. that jump stop, man, it's a, it's a tough miss, really short there. Missed but that jump stop can help you, though. Here comes offensive oh. foul as Bergeson was able to be outside the restricted arc. Yeah. And oh wow, that's that's uh, Sanders' fifth. Oh, boy. I wasn't even keeping track there yeah, that he was I close. I wasn't either. Man, I love watching him play. Man, again though, super athletic play oh, by yeah. Sanders, and it's one of those situations where I feel like the ath more athletic player uh -huh. 
um, which is to say nothing about Biggie Bergeson. But, no. but Sanders is making a hugely athletic player. He took off from the block uh -huh. for that, that layup. And, yeah. and, you know, it's just hard because you can do some things out here yeah. that uh, – yeah, maybe are so conspicuous and, and impressive yeah. that it's going to get the call on you. Yeah. So that's tough for Sanders. It's something he's going to have to sit. I wasn't sure if he was going to dunk that. Even. Yeah, I know mean, it looked like he, he might have wanted to. That's going to be tough for him to have to sit and watch the rest. You of You know, this. that's not a feeling I've ever had. <laughs> Take, taken off from the block, just taken. soaring through the air. Yeah, well, no, I can't nerf, say I've had one either. Nerf ball? No, maybe. No, yeah. On the but little yeah. little tykes hoop with my son, <laughs> right? With his little. Yeah, no, it is a good feeling, yeah, if you're playing on a four-foot Oh, hoop. nice pick by the Wildcats. Swill is that – oh, and he gets fouled. That is Swilly. And he goes behind his back in traffic, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Swilly's been having a great game for the Wildcats, leading the team with ten points. And really, at, at a couple occasions, his aggressiveness to the hoop has helped keep the Wildcats in the game. So credit goes to him. Great steal there for one thing, and then uh, and then a great drive to draw the foul. Swilly's a 90% free throw shooter, so he is the guy that Coach Renta wants on the line. Yeah. As he knocks home the first one. Yeah, the Wildcats have some really good free throw shooters. Jeanette, number, it shoots 89%. Swilly, 90%. Lloyd, 95%. Yeah. So if this came down to it at the end, you know they've got guys that can put it in. Swilly's from Tacoma, Washington couple hours from home. Went to Bella Vista College Prep Academy. We're going to have True Allen gets the ball inbounds. Nighthawks lead it by six. Just under two minutes to go. Good ball movement. Jalen Fox with the basketball. Fox is a good free throw shooter. Here's Bergeson. They're not fouling. Too early for them to foul. Here's Aaron Murphy going to go to work against Hector. Just Ooh. just a great patient play by True there as he loses his shoe. <laughs> Officials but. saw that, so they're going to let him put it back on. Mm -hmm. I thought Coach Hawkins called a timeout, but the official was just on top of the that's, shoe. That's nice to be able to, to have that stop and play there. Well, but and it definitely is uh, wasn't a disadvantage to Central. So that's, no, you right. Know, it's, a, it's a made basket. Yeah. Here's the on ball from Hector. Swilly's going to work behind his back in the lane. Up. The right-handed floater is tipped around. He gets his own rebound. Yeah, it's a great and play by Swilly. the left-handed bucket is there. Yeah. So Coach Rinto wants a 30-second timeout as they cut that lead back to six on the exchange of buckets with 1.08 to go. And here is here's the situation we, we alluded to earlier is the ability to play with the lead. Yeah. So we've got a six-point lead. You know, 68 seconds is an eternity. In college is. basketball. Yep. Each team's got two timeouts. Yep. So we're going to be here for another half an hour or 45 right, minutes. Right. <laughs> so it's like it's just the ability to understand possessions by the Nighthawks yeah. and their maturity as the year has gone on. Mm -hmm. So you got to imagine Coach Rinch is telling his guys they're going to have one more possession where they let the Nighthawks maybe bleed the shot clock right. out. But we're going to start seeing once we get into that 40 second range in yeah. this game, the Wildcats are probably going to rely on their really good shooters. You probably see a few more threes. Maybe not right away. Right. And then some fouling, and, and they're going to test the Nighthawks free throw shooters going down to the wire here, and that's that's going to be a real test. It's something that the Nighthawks have to get have to get dialed in if they're going to make a deeper run this year into the postseason. And we'll see. It'll be interesting to see who Coach uh, Hawkins, if we have any offense to defense substitutions um, to, to speak to the free throw shooting. Right. We'll see. So right now we've got the starters on the floor. The only person in foul trouble, so to speak, I think is Gabe Yep. And with four. Right. So, and here's what you exact. Oh, there's the foul. So the Nighthawks were able to bleed 14 seconds off, I think. Yep. So. Yeah, we are at 108 on that inbound. So here's True Allen. One plus the bonus. Both teams now with eight fouls. Again, big for the night uh, for the Wildcat strategy coming back is you got a couple fouls in the one on one. It's oh, gonna that be good for them. And rebound, yeah. rebound down to Clark. That's it. With the one on one situation, you kind of use that to your advantage for a bit. Boy, a three point bucket can cut this to a one possession game. Here's Lloyd going to work to the baseline. It, his floater is missed and rebounded down. And there's a foul on True Allen again. Coach Rinto wants the foul, and Lloyd is arguing. 
officials telling him that he went straight up. Boy, the Wildcats really want to talk to the referees about that lack, that no call from their perspective. Yeah. Oh, they're they're asking. Um, I think, I think was was um, Hector asking who that foul was on. It was oh, on three. Been. Swilly. Yeah. Oh, maybe Hector saw the three from the official and didn't see the two ah. on the other hand. You sure. know what I mean? Thinking sure. it was on him. Yeah, yeah. Because I think Hector has – oh, no, he only has one foul. So maybe I should stop trying to guess what was happening. Yeah, Hector <laughs> – no, I mean – Because he wouldn't have bothered him if it was only his second foul. Yeah, I don't know what Hector was asking about unless so. he was standing up for his guy. That's big. Big. Big two free throws made there by True. After a couple tough misses on the one-and-ones. Here comes Clark off the screen. Three-pointer looks good from here. Nope, it's long. That was straight from our angle, but Hector just a with bit a great long. offensive rebound. He's going to step back and take a three, and it's long. Rebound down. Great rebounding by the Wildcats. Yep, nice tip. But that clock is winding down. Here's Hector again for three. Oh, nope, it's missed. just, just tough Aaron to watch Murphy. if you're a Wildcat fan. Aaron Murphy's going to get the foul on the rebound. So good possession. From a defensive side at NNU by NNU by to chase the rebound, but then not overreact right. and take a step towards you. You know, right. they stayed on defense right. basically. And and you know, Hector is a fantastic player for the Wildcats, but the yeah. three point game is not is right. not his strength. Sure. And so you're going to let him shoot a couple of those back to back. Yeah. Um, now it comes down to just needing to make these free throws. Yeah. On the year, Hector is uh, 24 for 70. So. I mean, he has made a few threes. Yeah. And Aaron Murphy, big free throw. That stretches it to three possessions. So. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll take that back. Hector's got a decent three-point percentage. So so he just unfortunately has. But not necessarily under duress. It's hard to do that when you are you know you've got to knock him down at well, the end and of the as game. Well, and as a big, you know, you might have a couple guys sagging off of you when you're playing up top. Long three on the way, oh, and it's man. missed. To the Nighthawks, you know, so you, you got to feel for the Wildcats yeah. tonight. They they really have got had some good looks from three and just have not been able to hit. And just that a, was the big difference maker for them at home. Absolutely, just a tough. It's it's a road game. It that's is a that, road game. That's the thing. You're, yep. You you you. It's tough tough to shoot on the road. Yeah, but let's not and, take anything uh, away from no. the Nighthawks though, because they played it. They had a great game plan. Came out and executed. Great defensive effort. Tons yes. of tons of hands on balls. Yep. Doing absolutely. what they do well. Stealing it. Disrupting possessions. And so great Nighthawks win tonight. Yeah. You look at the look at the stat lines. The Nighthawks uh, eleven ended steals up tonight with eleven steals and and a huge one to me. Seven turnovers. Yep. That is. Hugh, that may be a season low as they forced 15. Of course, 11 of those 15 central turn central turnovers were steals. Yeah. So yeah, a handful of errant passes on those turnovers too for the for the uh, Wildcats. So the Nighthawks played a great defensive game. Credit yep. to them and to Coach Hawkins for a great game plan tonight. That it was very clear from the get go they executed well. Well, Grant, thanks for being with me tonight. I appreciated it. Yes. And for Josh Burkholder and his staff, I'm Craig Stensgard. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in a couple weeks when we return home. Good night, everybody.